Uh, shalom. Welcome to this broadcast all over the world. It's an interesting time. Uh, I'll encourage as you come on, begin to share. Uh, Susan, you're welcome to this broadcast. Begin to share this broadcast to your page, to your groups. Uh, even as we go deep into the Word of God today, uh, begin to share. Uh, this is another day the Lord has made. We shall rejoice in it and be glad in it. We appreciate God for the opportunity to share His Word. There is power in the Word of God. There is authority in the Word of God. You cannot go wrong where the Word of God is. You cannot go wrong where the Word of God is. So you're welcome. Begin to share the broadcast. Invite your friends. Invite people that you feel need to listen to this broadcast. I'm talking about the washing and cleansing of the Word. The washing and cleansing of the Word. Um, I'll go on. I'll continue. Those who will join us in the middle, God bless them. Those who will watch after, the video will be available on our page uh, for the viewership. Um, that's what I'm going to do right now. Uh, I'll be reading from the book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verse 25 to 26. It says, Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with the water through the word and to present her to himself as a radiant, a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish, but holy and blameless. The context of the word talks about husband and wife, but that is an analogy to show you the love between the church and Christ. He says he gave himself up for her to make are holy so one of the things we are learning from the word of god is that christ the reason why he gave himself up on the cross was for the purpose of making the church holy there is a process there is a purpose why christ had to give up his life it goes just beyond telling people that i'm born again i know jesus i'm in the kingdom it goes beyond clapping of hands shouting uh, speaking the church language it goes beyond that it is deeper than that when it comes to the things of the spirit is a very serious business it is not a joke that Christ had to give up his life for me for you he says that to make the church holy that you have come into the kingdom is not yet through there is work to be done Christ is working on our lives and in our lives for the bible says he gave her, he gave himself to make the church holy to make the church holy now we want to go and see the details of these things uh, that made christ that christ has made a commitment to what are these things what does the washing of the word uh, uh, what does it do to us he gave himself up for her to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with the water through the word and to present her to himself as a radiant church. It tells you that there is a cleansing that is supposed to take place in our lives daily. How many of you can, can survive or can go on with the operation without taking a shower? With the same urgency and importance that you go in your bathroom daily you freshen up you take a shower so that you are fresh so that when you go before people you look presentable you smell good it is the same thing that christ is doing for the church there is a commitment there is a work going on in our lives there is a work going on in our souls in our spirits what christ is doing is that he is cleansing us daily he is preparing us daily and there's, there's some things that we need to have as Christians 
I'll break down the things that have been mentioned here one by one. So what does washing of the what does what does the word of God is compared to water spiritually. The word of God is compared to water, is able to wash. The word of God is able to wash. So number one, cleansing by the word makes us holy. The agenda of Christ Jesus is to make sure that we are holy. To wash our feet, to wash our faces, to wash our bodies so that we are holy. And we cannot do without holiness in the kingdom. And the water is a tool that Christ uses to wash us. Meaning that if you don't read the word of God, if you don't study the word of God, it will be difficult for you to be cleansed. Each time you take the word of God and you begin to read scriptures, you begin to go into the word of God, to begin to read, the process of cleansing begins. Because the word is the water. The word of God is the water that washes your soul. The word of God is the water that washes your soul. I know you might be mentioning the blood. Remember the blood when it was shed, it touched your spirit and made your spirit clean. But we have a responsibility of washing ourselves daily, especially in our soul area. So, one of the things Christ is doing is cleansing us to make us holy. You might be asking, when was the last time I was dirty? I want to mention things that can make you as a Christian to make you dirty. Things like bitterness. Things like gossip. And forgiveness. They make your garment dirty spiritually. And as they begin to make you dirty, you begin to smell bad. You begin to stink. That's why it's important each time you go into the Word, the Word is washing you. It is washing your mind. Especially these days, we have a lot of bad material everywhere, pornographic material in our mobile phones. The world has come up with a system of making all of us dirty in our minds, in our meditation. But the Bible says there is the washing of the Word of God. There is the washing of the Word of God that is able to wash your mind. It's able to wash your mind. Immediately you go into the Word of God, the process of cleansing begins. You remember there's another text that says, My words are spirit. It is water in the spiritual form. It begins to wash your soul. It begins to wash your mind. It is beginning to wash the inside, including feelings. Some people have contaminated feelings. They sin in their feelings. Your emotions. Your emotions are defiled. You are defiled in your emotions. You are not pure as far as emotions are concerned. Others in the mind. Your mind is dirty. You cannot overcome certain thoughts. The devil keeps on bombarding you with thoughts. For yourself, you find it very hard to escape these things. The mind is not pleasing God. You don't have the mind of Christ. I want to encourage you today that each time you feel like you don't have the mind of Christ, you are operating in the carnal mind, I'll encourage you to begin to read the scriptures meditatively. Begin to take the word of God, not with the purpose of just finishing the scriptures, finishing chapters. No, read the word of God with the intention of allowing the word to minister to your spirit, to minister to your soul. There is nothing that can transform your life. There is nothing that can cleanse you more than the word of God. It has been said it is the water that washes. Are, are you struggling with pornographic thoughts? Are you struggling with evil thoughts, hatred, bitterness? It's very hard for you to forgive. There's some people you hate so much. It means that your soul area is defiled. It means that you are dirty as far as the soul is concerned. But we thank God today, we have seen another thing that will lift us. We have seen that the word of God is able to wash us. It is able to cleanse us from any impurity, any defilement. You might be defiled yourself in the process of doing business. 
you are at work, some people offend you, you get angry, you speak some words, or you develop bitterness in your heart, you are already dirty as far as your soul is concerned. That's why the word of God will be needed for you to cleanse yourself from the impurities, from the defilement, from the dirt. You need the word to wash you, to cleanse you from that bitterness. So the purpose of the word of God is to make you holy. I've seen Christians who pray a lot, they clap their hands, they sing, but they rarely study the word. They clap hands, they sing, they participate in church, always in church, but they don't study the word of God in their private time. It means these people are not being washed. Despite them being in the church building, despite them shouting, despite them being with us in fellowships, they are not being cleansed. They are not being washed. It's because they are not taking advantage of the word. They are not applying the word. You cannot be cleansed until you take a responsibility of studying the word while meditating. Christ cannot study the word for you. Jesus cannot study the word for you. What will happen is that you need to take the initiative of going into the word of God. And then the spirit of God will begin to open up the word. He will begin to bring understanding. But you must take the word of God on your own first. You must take in the word of God. You must apply the word to your soul. And then the spirit of God gives illumination. And then Christ is able to do what? Cleanse you. So this journey is a, is a journey that you, all of us need to participate. You do your part. The Holy Spirit does his part. Jesus does his part. You cannot just sit there and, and imagine that I'll move forward, I'll be clean, I'll be okay. You need to move with the faith and begin to do some things in the physical. And then the spiritual will come in and kick it off. So Christ is in the business of making us holy daily. And he depends on the word that we take in. If you don't take in the word, the process, the process will slow down. No wonder you see, you see some people are moving ahead of others as far as faith is concerned. Someone can come two years later into salvation and they really grow. is because they are always in the word. Even if, 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 even if they look imperfect, the minute, the minute they come into the word of God, the word begins to work in their lives. God does not discriminate. Immediately anybody opens up their hearts and they begin to look at the word of God, they begin to be cleansed. They begin to be washed. Ideologies that are evil, thinking patterns that are not supposed to be there, it begins to deal with them. Thinking patterns, anything that is not of God, it is washed away. And you, the process of you being holy is initiated by the fact that you are studying the Word of God. That you are studying the Word of God. I want us to go into um, uh, the, the other thing. It is the radiance and glory. The Word of God brings radiance and glory. I was looking at the definition of uh, uh, radiance, shining, glowing, the brightness that comes with the word of God. The brightness that comes with the word of God. Anybody that takes in the word of God, it brings forth glory. It brings forth glory. It means that in your life, you begin to, sh you begin to shine. And it is this brightness that the Bible says, you are the light of the world. You are the light of the world. You are no longer dim in your spirit. You are no longer dim in the inside of you. It's because the word of God is alive in your spirit. You keep on feeding with the word of God. It is this light. I'm not talking about this light that is in your room. I'm not talking about the natural light. I'm talking about the light and the glory that comes from the word of God. This light is able. This light is able able to shine supernaturally at your workplace. This light is able to shine and attract people that you need in your life. There are some people that you need in your life, but you cannot see them. It's because your light is very small. You lack the glow. 
there is a glow that comes by the word of God. So apart from the word cleansing you, the word is able to bring a special glow upon your life. It is able to bring a special glow upon your life so that that glow, that brightness, that glory begins to pave the way for you. When demons begin to see this light, they begin to flee. When witches begin to see this light that is upon you, they begin to flee. But this radiance comes by the word of God. You remember when Moses went up the hill to be given the commandments. When he was coming back, the face was radiant. There was glory on his face. It's because he was with the word. He was talking to the word. He was meeting God. As Moses went up the hill to meet God, in the same same way when you go and study the word of God, you are meeting God in the word. You're not doing anything less than what Moses did. You are not doing anything less that Moses did. When you read the word of God, just know you are meeting God himself. The word is Jesus. You're meeting God and the radiance, the glory that is upon the word of God will begin to come upon your life and you'll begin to shine in life. You begin to shine in your endeavors in life. So your spirit will send light. Your spirit will send light around your life and there'll be illumination around your life. There'll be clarity around your, around your life. Some people will begin to pave the way for you. Obstacles will begin to fall off. The obstacles will begin to fall off because of the glory that comes by the word of God. Another thing is that the word of God removes stains. By any means, if there are any stains, any stains on your garment, the word of God is able to cleanse and remove the stains, to wash away the stains. Because remember, you're supposed to stay pure. Each time your garment catches stains, you begin to attack the enemy. You begin to bring demons close to you because they can smell that there's something wrong with your garment. But the word is able to cleanse away every stain. You might remember uh, when you have a white garment and then you go through the farm, you go through the market. By chance, that garment will touch something that will defile it. It will make it uh, dirty. It's the same with us. In our daily walk, our daily activities, we go through places, we go through situations, we go through encounters, and we begin to discover that our garments have been stained in the course of business. Our garments have been stained in the course of doing work. Our garments have been stained because of various activities that we indulge ourselves in. Then we will need the word. We will need the ministry of the word to cleanse us from all righteousness. So stains are caused by the things that I've just mentioned. Bitterness. Bitterness. And forgiveness. Things which bring stains in your life are things like bitterness. And forgiveness. Hatred. Adultery. Fornication. All those sins, they bring a stain into your garment. And this stain will attract evil spirits close to you. The glow upon your life will begin to reduce. But the Bible says that the word removes the stain. Because the word is the water that washes. I know some of you have ever had dreams that they are washing their garments. They are busy washing their clothes. Some people have had dreams that they are going into a room they are using a washing machine to wash their garment. All these dreams have to do with washing your inner garment, to cleanse it, to make it pure, to repent. Repentance and applying the word of God in your life. That's what happens. That is what happens. That is what happens. So stains are removed by the word of God. And then we move to the next. We have wrinkles. You might be asking, what are wrinkles? Wrinkles is when your garment has been folded in a way that it cannot be presentable. 
there's those who like going to offices there's no way you can go to an office with a shirt or a blouse or um a dress that is folded it will make you unpresentable before people there are people uh, whose garment is not stained but is is wrinkled your garment is wrinkled that's been folded you are not presentable spiritually you look bad the word of god is able to wash and cleanse your garment to remove the wrinkles to iron it out so that you are dress your garment is without wrinkles it is without wrinkles another thing that the word does it removes blame from your life you might have moved from place to place uh done so many activities with people and then they begin to blame you each time people blame you they throw mud at your garment you might be asking yourself how how do i know that my garment is dirty each time there is blame game in your life so and so is blaming you the other person is blaming you people are blaming you those all those people that are throwing mud on your white garment so there is a lot of blame the more there is a lot of blame in your life it means that people are blaming you and they are throwing mud at your garment you cannot be clean with such kind of an environment you cannot be clean with such kind of confrontation so it means that when you apply the word of god it is able to do much it is able to remove the wrinkles it is able to remove the stain i just want to encourage you out there that it's time for us to go back to the word of god i know we have social media we have so many networks people are preaching but it's time for us to go back into our bibles to begin to dig the word of god for ourselves to begin to read the word of god for ourselves because it is important when we look at the word of god because of the process of cleansing because of the water it's a personal responsibility to take a shower i've never I've, i've never seen people who wait to be encouraged by other people to go for shower you're waiting to to to, to listen you're waiting to listen to um a news so that they can announce the next time you'll go for shower i've never heard about that it is a personal initiative that's why people some people call it personal hygiene it's a personal hygiene that you'll just think ah if i stay two days without shower things won't be nice things won't be good the smell won't be uh, um a uh, pleasant it is the same way if you stay away from the word of god you begin to stink if you stay away from the word of god you begin to smell and what happens to anybody that smells they begin to attract flies they begin to attract flies and you know very well from the scripture flies represent evil spirits So I want to speak to that person that keeps on having a bad dream a demonic attack you keep on dreaming that things are trying to strangle you something is sitting on you something is shaking on your bed I want to ask yourself how clean are you how are you smelling spiritually what is your spiritual smell could it be that you have attracted a fly close to you because of the smell Could it be that you are the one responsible for the attacks because you have allowed yourself to go without shower you have allowed yourself to go 3 days without shower 4 days without shower a week without shower when i say shower i mean the word of god could it be that the, could it be that you have taken long without going deep into the word of god to study and to allow the word of god to wash you those are some of the things that um the lord has placed upon my heart to speak so that everybody that will encounter this broadcast i pray for a hunger in their hearts to go back to the word of god i pray that people will begin to consume scriptures upon scriptures daily that this word will begin to change people's hearts we have allowed the enemy to plant things in our hearts because or we don't read the word of god we have allowed Uh, thinking patterns of the world to flow into our lives because there is no cleansing 
we are subjecting ourselves, we are conforming to the world, and yet the Bible says we should no longer be conformed to the patterns of the world. We should yield, we should be transformed by the washing. The word washes. Thinking patterns that are inherited in your family, mediocrity that is inherited in your family, the word of God is able to cleanse you, is able to wash you. So today I'm encouraging you, take time to study the word without um, speed. I want you to begin to study the word of God with the mind of allowing the word of God to work in you. I'm not asking you to read. I'm not asking you to study. I'm asking you to consume, to eat it. To eat it, to make sure that it goes in the inside of you. There are some people who read the word of God. They'll tell you I've read it like a story, like um, any other story in the Bible. There are those people who will study it, those who are in school, theology. They'll study it for academic reasons. They'll quote the scripture for academic reasons. But there is a group of people who will eat the word of God, who will consume the word of God, who will meditate on it until it stays in the spirit. So I want to pray for someone out there that is watching this or they'll come and watch later that a desire for the word of God will begin to be implanted in you. That from today you'll begin to speak speak you'll begin to speak you'll begin to declare words because they are already in the inside of you i pray for that person that has been defiled has been stained by the activities of the world by the pressures of the world by greed by hatred your garments have been defiled by all those things i pray may the cleansing power of the holy ghost begin to work upon your life may christ begin to make you holy May the word of God begin to work in the side of you to bring a transformation. I pray for your mind. May your mind receive a transformation. May you receive the mind of Christ from today. May you begin to think like Christ today in the name of Jesus. I bless everybody that is uh, watching this. That may you begin to have a new desire, a zeal to go after the word of God and to begin to eat it. In Jesus' name, I pray. Shalom, thank you for watching. God bless you.